You know, I had several people message. I, I couldn't even keep up with the messages at one point um, when he got bad. You know, I'd have people say, you know, it's okay to let him go. You know, don't don't feel bad. You know, he'll be better with Jesus and blah, blah, blah. And um, I had people who were like, no, no, keep fighting. You know, keep fighting. He can do it, you know. And I just did not want that day to come. I did not want... To bury him, I did not. I, I don't know. It was inconceivable. I, I just kept holding out for something to happen. I specifically remember when Remy's heart was punctured, and we had to flip the room into an OR, and the surgeons happened to be in the next room, um, and they literally came over and cut his chest open right in front of me. I stood there pretty much the whole time while they um, worked on his heart for three hours. I can still smell the cauterizing tool. I remember just seeing like smoke coming out from his chest. I mean, I've never seen so much blood in my life and for it to be my own child, that was traumatizing, literally traumatizing. I thought, oh god, we've punctured his heart, you know, how, how is he going to make it through this? But it was just heart-wrenching to just not know what the outcome of that was going to be. Or his life, for that matter. This lady was a pastor, and she came up to me, and she put her hand on my shoulder, and she said, I don't think you should be watching this. And I said, I'm not moving. And not leaving my son. I I just kept holding out for something to happen. You know, I actually remember going out to my car, sitting in there, and screaming up at the sky and just saying, like, are you serious? You know, I said, You've brought all these people, all these people had messaged me and said, you know, my faith has been restored and you know with your son and seeing how he's overcome so much and you know I, I literally was just screaming at God like you know you've brought all these people to you how can you take him away you're gonna crush their faith you know I, I had my angry moments with God um, but I just remember literally I mean I did that and then <sighs> Tara was messaging me next I knew you know, we got to the point where there was nothing more to do. There was no more options at all. You know, it was inevitable. He was going to die. It was literally the nick of time. So when I got Tara's message, I literally ran up to the doctor station and I felt like they thought I was crazy because I was running up to them holding my phone with a screenshot of Ohio's protocols from her what she said made sense to me, but when I approached the doctors about it, they, all of them just thought it sounded nuts. I said, if we're letting him go tomorrow, if we're pulling the plug, what is it going to hurt? I said, I, I literally was begging them. And at that point, I had hope. There was one last thing that just happened to come out, and I wasn't taking no for an answer. You know, I. Once, once that hope was given to me, I wasn't letting it go. There was no way.
about like five days.